Well, hello, my peeps. It's Antoinette here. And uh, as you can see, I have a lot of ingredients on the table. I'm really excited because, uh, not for today, but for tomorrow. Uh, and, you know, it being Saturday, I don't want to wish my weekend away, but tomorrow um, I'm really looking forward to seeing my coworker. Uh, we're going to Crawdaddy's, which is an authentic uh, Louisiana uh, restaurant. Um, now, I told her, I said, I, I can't go. Uh, you know, I'm on the, uh, the total money makeover. I, there's no room in my budget for, um, for going out to eat. There's not. So uh, she's buying, which uh, is very sweet of her. Uh, but I know she's been wanting to do this since my birthday. Uh, maybe before, but I have not seen her since March 2019 when they sent us home for what was supposedly uh, six weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> they never had any intention of just flattening the curve. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, it's Saturday. Great day for a Bloody Mary. And uh, I am going to make for her because she's uh, diabetic. She's not keto. Um, but she uh, does watch her sugar, you know, of course, and um, she's low sugar and, and, and low carb. She watches her carbs, but she does eat bread. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make her some sugar-free pumpkin cookies. <laughs> Stay tuned. In this bowl, I have my dry ingredients. So what's in here is one and a third cup of my almond flour. Uh, that's the Aldi's brand. And a third of a cup of this coconut flour. Uh, this I believe I got at Kroger. Two tablespoons of the whey protein isolate. So glad I learned this trick. Uh, this is what holds it all together. Um, and then I put in one tablespoon of Anthony's organic oat fiber. One teaspoon of the baking powder, the Argo aluminum free. So that's what I have in here. Now I was going to use this pie spice from Penzi's. It's really wonderful. But um, when I looked at the ingredients, I saw that sugar is the second ingredient. I made my own. In here I have one teaspoon of organic cinnamon. Uh, this is just the the Aldi's brand. Uh, ginger, I have no idea because I filled that. Uh, eighth a teaspoon, eighth a teaspoon of allspice, and an eighth a teaspoon of nutmeg. So that's what's in there. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in with my dry ingredients. I have my mixing bowl over here and my sifter. And uh, I'm going to sift all of this together into this bowl. Okay, this is finely sifted. Um, and I put away um, all of the, uh, the flowers and the ingredients that are in here uh, just to clean it up a bit. Now, I have the debut of my new mixer. So you know that I had my old son be mix master. I did some research and found out this is model 12. Model 12 uh, came out, it was from 1957 to 1967. And I got this free <laughs> at a garage sale in a free box and it's been working great. I loved it. And it only came with this small bowl and then I found another small bowl, um, you know, at thrift stores or I don't know exactly where, same exact model, Sunbeam, glass bake, in milk glass. Uh, then I was really excited. I had to pay up for this one when I found the big one. Um, but I did find it, I think it was at the antique shop. And then I found the manual for a dollar um, at that other garage sale, which I was so happy about. Um, 
but you know this did not they didn't have the dough hooks back then so um it's going on ebay but at least i have a manual now to sell it with so here's my upgraded version now i have to tell you a story about this i actually bought this not this one but i bought this at vinnie's i was very excited about it for like 12.99 I mean, I love how light it is. This is, if you can see, this is the 60th anniversary limited edition um, that came out in 1990. The problem was it was all taped up and I untaped it and the whole top of it was all broken off. I was very upset. I oh, I took it back to Vinnie's and then I went on eBay and sure enough I found it. They wanted $60. <laughs> but by then I was so in love with it that I wanted it. It comes with the big bowl, uh, the dough hooks, and I mean this one was complete, which is why she got that kind of money for it because it had all the bowls. Some had one bowl. Uh, some had no bowls, some had no dough hooks. This was the only one that had the bowls, all the beaters, and, and, the, and the manual. And in beautiful condition. I love the two-tone. And of course, you can just take this off. <laughs> this one is a lot easier to use than the, uh, the old one. So I upgraded by 30 years. <laughs> I swear, I really, really don't want a KitchenAid. Okay, we're ready to mix, or we're ready to cream. A quarter cup of the cream cheese. I'm using the Aldi's uh, whipped, uh, because either that or you have to, you know, it has to be very soft. Quarter cup. Quarter cup of softened butter. Now this is salted. I didn't add um, salt to my uh, dry ingredients because I was using salted butter. Uh, if you were using unsalted butter, then you would uh, add a quarter teaspoon salt to your dry ingredients. Now I have uh, a quarter cup, this is a third cup, I'm sorry, third cup of the Lakanto uh, brown sugar sweetener. You use your sweetener of choice. And I'm also using a third cup of the, I'm using King Arthur's, um, it's the baking sugar alternative. It has everything in it, erythritol, um, allulose, monk fruit, and stevia. So it is a mix, but I tell you this clumps. I had to, uh, since the last time I used it, I had to grab my meat tenderizer and beat the bag. <laughs> so we're gonna put that in there. Okay, it's a little clumpy still. Now, I likely will not um, buy this again. This was $10 on Amazon. And um, I'm just really not a fan. Um, it's okay, but to me it wasn't worth this price. Uh, this here I have not tried. I got this from Costco. So this big old bag was $8.99. Uh, and this is uh, erythritol and monk fruit blend. And it's zero net carbs. Uh, what does this have? Uh, this has a two, one, uh, one. Okay, so it's it has zero net carbs as well. Um, and the brown sugar, yeah, sugar alcohol. So they are all zero carb sugars. I also have Truvia, but that does have some real sugar in it. So since I'm making this for Kara Lee, um, I'm going totally sugar free, and that's why. I opted for the sugars that I chose. All right, now we're gonna turn it on. I love that it's got 
the little settings. Okay, so cream is seven. Here we go. I need to let her on go. I'm gonna let it cream for five minutes. It's been five minutes, and um, now it's very well creamed. I'm gonna add, uh, I have a quarter cup heaping of the uh, pure pumpkin puree. Put that in there. I have one large egg. Now I had, uh, my protein powder has vanilla in it. So at this point you would put in a teaspoon of vanilla, but since I had vanilla in my protein powder, uh, I'm just gonna add, just for extra pumpkin, this McCormick's, uh, this is pure pumpkin pie spice extract, but I'm only gonna put in a half a teaspoon of that with this. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna mix that up. I love it. So here it is. So it has a really nice consistency. And I tasted it. It's delicious. Okay. Now grab the dry ingredients. Start with a little bit. get this out of the way you can tell it's fall because look this is what's left it's pretty dry my rosemary this is what's left from my herb garden so I'm just drying it out get it out of the way all right let's mix this fold number one fold Turn it up a little. Beautiful. <laughs> Let her rip. There you have it. Here's our cookie dough. Um, so, <laughs> I lit the beater, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's not too sweet, um, which is how I like it. Uh, if you like it sweeter, you might want to use a little bit more sugar, but the, uh, frosting is also going to have sweetener in it, uh, which we'll be making uh, a little bit later, but... Mm -hmm. You can really taste the ginger, so um, I like that. I like the addition of the pumpkin pie spice um, extract. Now we're just going to cover it up with plastic wrap and it's going into the refrigerator for an hour. It's been an hour. Let's take out the cookies. You know, I wanted to tell you, I went to um, all these today and they, they had the cutest thing there I had to splurge on it not too bad $4.99 for this little spring form cheesecake pan it's like it's like perfect for one or two so I just love this this I will actually use because I don't make um, you know cheesecake very often because it you know come I have the big old pan uh, but I'll make little bars or something but this I'll make a little cheesecake. Yeah, that will be coming up uh, sometime soon. <laughs> also, all right, here we got almond nog. All right, it's not too horrible. I mean, it's not the greatest, you know, you know there's gonna be some sugar in there. Um, okay, so it's nine carbs for a half a cup. <laughs> so you're not gonna have much of this, I figured. I got my silver fade little glasses from the 60s 
it, it's like four ounces. I think this one's five. So I can have like um, uh, this size, uh, which I think I will make um, a little one of those with uh, not even a shot, like a splash of some brandy. We'll try it out after we get the cookies in the oven. Let's preheat it to 350. Well, here's my tray of cookies. Um, I just used this, uh, it looks like about one tablespoon, I believe it is. This one's Pampered Chef. I should be able to get about a dozen and a half. I went ahead and grabbed this uh, teaspoon. Let's see, this is a, yeah, a teaspoon. I wet it and then just dipped it in some almond flour to just kind of push them down. One thing is for sure, you have to work with these really fast because uh, by the time I got to the uh, pressing down the dimple in in this one, I went to the first one and it was already uh, getting all uh, smushy and hard to work with. So, uh, yeah, you cannot skip the step about refrigerating them for an hour. I'll tell you that. All right, we're at 298. Uh, let's go ahead and make this little cocktail. <laughs> Try this almond nug. Um, it was $2.98, so I don't know. I really, really do love eggnog. Uh, I kind of like almond milk. <laughs> just kind of over. Let's just take a, a sip of it all by itself in this little four-ouncer. Yeah, it's quite thin. It tastes like eggnog. It tastes like light eggnog. We're at the final stretch. I have the cookies uh, all cooled off on the rack. Now, I was watching this movie on Netflix, uh, Moneyball, uh, with Brad Pitt, a baseball movie. I kind of lost track of time. Well, these, they're just a little brown, but they're not burnt. They're, you can tell they're really still soft um, and chewy. But the second batch, so I have 17 here. Um, but the second batch, I kept an eye on. And uh, so these five are for Carolee. <laughs> these are not burnt, they're just a little dark. I will eat them. Okay, so on to the frosting. Really super easy. I have. Uh, one eight ounce package. Um, this is the Aldi's whipped uh, cream cheese. It's so much easier to have it pre-whipped for things like this. Next, I have a half a cup heavy whipping cream into the bowl. Just a few ingredients. All right, and then we have a teaspoon of vanilla, this is a vanilla bean vanilla. The last ingredient is the powdered sugar, Lakanto powdered sugar, uh, monk fruit and erythritol sweetened, one third cup. We're just gonna beat it up. I made such a mess. <laughs> All right, so this is really quick and easy um, as opposed to the 1967 version. You just take it off and for a large bowl, small bowl. Now I'm putting it on the small bowl. <laughs> I really like that. They had, the old one had a whole lever that was kind of hard to manipulate, but yeah. All right, better it. This icing is so good. Mm. It's so fresh tasting. All right, now it's very important that you don't overmix this. If you overmix it, it's gonna become too liquidy. There's a very fine line uh, between that. So you just mix it until it's mixed and that's it. 
like this. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy. All right, I have the number 6B. I got this whole package of tips and stuff. Uh, Wilton from my daughter for Christmas last year. I'm just now playing with it. Uh, so, yeah, I have a, the large coupler and number 6B, which is the, the star, uh, which would be the easiest to just for the cookies. Okay, just gonna pour it in here. Open her on up. I think you're supposed to fold it. I don't really know. She's the baker, not me. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do. Otherwise, you're gonna make a total mess. I'm gonna quickly frost them. The tip does all the work for you. Just a swirl on each one. There's the cookies. I have to tell you, this icing is really frosting. It is like licked the whole bowl delicious. I mean, that's what I intend to do <laughs> uh, right after I try one of these. So I'm gonna take a bite. Oh, but it's uh, just, all right, let's just grab one of these. All right, that, there they are. Mmm. Put this down. I, there it is. I mean, they are just, they're very chewy. Mm. What's really good about them, I think my favorite thing that I like about them is that it doesn't taste like a pumpkin cookie per se, it tastes more like a spice cookie. So this to me is a, I, I, I could make this all year round. It's really good. All right. I'm gonna get these in the refrigerator overnight. The funny ironic thing is, is that this restaurant uh, used to be my corner bar, but it wasn't my my corner bar that was it was called yesteryears uh, back in the 90s and uh, it was where I bought my first house it's uh, the first house I owned with John and um, when we moved in together that's the house we moved in into uh, our first purchase anyway <laughs> uh, we'll see how that house is falling apart it was a fixer-upper when we bought it all right We'll see you tomorrow at the restaurant. It's Sunday. I'm on my way to meet Carol Lee for lunch. And um, God put it on my heart to give her my Total Money Makeover and Financial Peace University so that she can live simply. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the whole uh, CD. Uh, there's like 18 of those. Here's the um, the envelope system. I didn't never use that, but uh, this was going to go back on eBay. But based on conversations that we've had in the past, I think she would really appreciate this. Here's her cookies. <laughs> oh, I had a few last night. They are just really, really good. There it is, my very first house. 1427 South 95th Street in West Dallas, where dreams go to die. <laughs> oh gosh, I remember putting those brass letters up. Um, and they still have my mailbox. When did I sell this house? Um, 1996. No, that's the year we bought it. Let's see. It was um, 2001, right? <laughs> All right. Going off to crowd daddies. 
Okay, here's the menu at Crawdaddy's. And uh, uh, Carol Lee and I were both getting that trio of Benedicts. Say hi, Carol Lee. Hello. There she is, my girl Carol Lee. I miss her so much. Look at this. It's amazing. So this is lobster. This is bacon. And what was that one, Carol Lee? Uh, tomato. Tomato. Yeah. And um, I'm going to eat all of those carbs that are on there. That's right. <laughs> I know the traffic is loud, but we're at Crawdaddy's, and uh, yeah, it's pretty darn big. <laughs> That's my old street. Okay, I gotta show you this place. All right, we're inside the French Quarter. <laughs> oh, this place is so great. I mean, I already ate, so I, I'm just, you know, going uh, backtracking right now. But it looks so much like Louisiana. I lived there for five years, I know. <laughs> Granted, it was the 80s, and uh, that, that's where uh, Carolee and I are sitting. She just went to the restroom. So then here, they have this out in the open, which I think is kind of strange. This side is the bar, and um, Wow, it's really big and back here. Well, I can remember when it was yesteryears. Let's see what's in the back. Wow, if I lived in West Dallas, I would um, be a regular. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything this cool in Pewaukee. All right, go back this way. Oh, this room is great. I just love those windows. Okay. There's Kira Lee. 